My name is Teresa Allen, and I am a former participant in First Place. It's been a while now, 14 years to be exact, since I graduated from First Place, and nearly 35 years since I first entered the foster care system as an infant. My mother was in jail when she had me, and of course was unable to care for me and my sisters. And after my father could no longer care for us alone, we entered the system when I was only about three months old. My sisters and I were in foster care for about a year or so until my mother or my father was able to regain custody of us. The details are a bit fuzzy considering both of my parents were on drugs at the time and the re their recollection of the events are quite reliable. Eventually, my father took my sisters and me to live with him in Arizona, and after five years of having a pretty normal and stable life, he struggled again to care for us on his own. So, at the age of nine, my sisters, ages 10 and 12 at the time, and I, we all entered foster care again, for good, until we all aged out of the system at age 18. From ages nine through 18, I lived in 12 different foster homes mostly throughout San Francisco and down the peninsula, and one group home on a farm way out in Ceres, uh, way past Modesto, Turlock, if you're familiar with it, way out there um, in the middle of nowhere. My sisters and I were separated immediately and for most of our duration in the system. Oftentimes we wouldn't know where each other lived and when we would find out, we would write each other to stay in touch and send pictures and sometimes even send money when we got a little older. As you can imagine, moving frequently from home to home was exhausting and emotionally draining. You learn not to get too comfortable in one place and not to get too close to anyone to protect yourself and out of fear of rejection. Although I moved around a lot, for the most part, I was able to attend the same middle and high schools, even when it meant having to wake up in the wee hours of the morning and uh, take two buses, two long bus rides to get to school. School was the only constant in my life. It was familiar, it was where I got support and encouragement from teachers, coaches, and friends, even though no one knew I was in foster care. At the start of my junior year of high school, I was suddenly moved to the group home in series. But I was a city girl. I didn't belong on the farm, and more importantly, I was 16 years old, and. There was no way I was going to let a social worker or anyone else tell me what to do. So, <laughs> when I was allowed to visit my sister for Thanksgiving in San Francisco, who at the time was 19 and lived with a boyfriend, I took the round trip Greyhound bus ticket I was given and never returned. I was technically a runaway for about six or seven months, more like a nerdy runaway, because <laughs> after I moved in with one of my best friends, I had one of my sister's friends sign guardianship papers and re-enroll me back to my old high school in San Francisco. I then got a job at a movie theater, with AMC on Venice, <laughs> right over there, and uh, was basically living an independent life. After about six or seven months, I knew I could stay with my friend forever, and I didn't want to remain AWOL. So I finally returned my social worker's calls and agreed to move back into a foster home of a woman whom I was once close to and who had always been very kind to me. During this time, I started to seriously think about college and my future living situation. I realized that once I turned 18 and was no longer a ward of the state, I was responsible for myself. It would be up to me, not the state, to find somewhere to lay my head each night. It was up to me to secure my future and prepare for my transition into adulthood. <clears throat> College was always in my plans simply because I was studious and I liked to learn. But entering my senior year, it quickly became apparent that college, the dorms in particular, was a place I could live and secure housing and with a meal plan. With the help of the Independent Living Skills Program, a program that partners with First Place, which uh, the Independent Living Skills Program provided me a plane ticket, a computer, and a small scholarship, and I attended Southern University, a um, historical black college in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Needless to say, it was no San Francisco. It was really hot, and flying bugs, and I, I, I couldn't do it. So, so after one semester, I returned back to San Francisco, moved in with a friend, and attended Laney Community College in Oakland. 
it was during this time that I heard of first place. Through the Independent Living Skills program, I believe, I heard there was a program that provided housing to former foster youth, so I was like, sign me up. I think I already had the drive that I needed to successfully live independently, but first place provided the keys, both literally and figuratively speaking. Not only did first place provide subsidized housing, along with Safeway gift cards and BART tickets to go to and from school and work, which were extremely helpful to a 19-year-old full-time college student working part-time, but also a friend, big sister, and role model in my youth advocate, Keisha Peacock. Her door was always open for the occasional drop-in or to give advice, support, or even just a hug. She was someone I could truly rely on and remain in touch with till this day. Without realizing it at the time, because First Place removed the stress and uncertainty of secure housing, provided a welcoming place I could go to at any time and a support system that cheered me on, I was able to focus on school and keep my plans intact. I eventually transferred from Laney to Cal State Hayward, just Cal State East Day now, and graduated with my bachelor's degree in political science. I then moved to Washington, D.C. to attend law school at the University of D.C. at the University of D.C. David A. Clark School of Law. Afterwards, I got my master's in law at, uh, from the George Washington University School of Law, also in D.C. I then moved back to California, passed the bar exam, and now I'm a class action attorney. And now I'm a class action attorney practicing primarily, primarily in the area of employment law. Together with my husband, we own our home and have three amazing children, ages two, four, and six. Yeah. <laughs> any of the youth today can follow in my footsteps, any of the youth here today can follow in my footsteps and achieve whatever it is they hope to accomplish. Because many former foster youth don't have anywhere to go after they age out of the system and lack the resources to figure it out on their own. Programs like First Place are vital to the quest to beat the odds, obtain and maintain stable housing, and make the successful transition to independent living. I am forever grateful for my time in First Place and will continue to support it, and I hope you all will as well. Thank you.